Welcome back to this special edition of the Hardware Unbox News Corner. Normally we publish these on a Friday, but just today I received a bit of news in my inbox that I think warrants pushing this video forward. This may not be the longest or the most in-depth video in our history as this has all been a bit last minute and I haven't had a ton of time to work on it, but here we go anyway. So today, AMD are officially launching their Ryzen 4000 APUs for desktop systems, which AMD has given the spectacular name in their press presentation as Ryzen 4000 G-Series Desktop Processors with Radeon Graphics. Bit of a mouthful that one, but here we are, AMD are finally ready to detail Ryzen 4000 APUs for desktop after numerous leaks over the past few months. The big news out of this presentation, and a bit of a surprise, is that AMD are not focusing on the DIY market with the first wave of Ryzen 4000 APUs. These new chips are first destined to launch in OEM systems, as well as pre-builds from your favorite system integrators. So what you won't see throughout this video is any pricing information for these APUs. That's because as it stands right now, AMD aren't bringing these APUs to the market as boxed products, at least initially. AMD did mention in their presentation, however, that next generation AMD APUs will be available for the DIY market at a later date. They are fully aware of the interest around Ryzen APUs and Renoir and are working to bring new parts to the market, but they aren't ready right now. In fact, we don't know whether the exact Ryzen 4000 SKUs we'll be going through today will be the SKUs AMD will launch for DIY PC builders. It's possible AMD will tweak things a bit for enthusiast desktop, but that remains to be seen. It is worth mentioning that AMD were careful to dodge around specifically saying that Ryzen 4000 Renoir APUs will hit the DIY desktop market, instead using terms like next generation and saying that new APUs will be available for both 400 and 500 series motherboards. Reading between the lines and from having a few discussions with AMD though, it sounds like AMD are bringing Renoir to the DIY market, they are just unwilling to say that explicitly at the moment, so we'll have to see how that plays out. I guess you can think of this launch a bit like the Radeon RX 5500 XT from late last year, the first announcement of the RX 5500 was specifically for the OEM market, with AMD dodging around explicitly saying whether that card would be available for the DIY market. There was a bit of speculation that maybe the OEM cards would be a bit different to the DIY cards, but in the end, DIY cards did launch shortly after and were very similar. I suspect today's announcement for Ryzen 4000 for OEMs is like that case with the RX 5500 where some OEMs are ready to launch systems with this new component inside now and need AMD to announce the products before they can bring stuff to market. At the same time, it's just slightly too early for the DIY market and the schedules here haven't lined up well. At least that's my read on it. Anyway, let's get right into the actual products. So the Ryzen 4000 G series, as AMD are calling it, is based on the Renoir die that was first used for Ryzen Mobile 4000 APUs. What we're looking at here is a monolithic die with up to eight Zen 2 CPU cores and eight Vega GPU compute units, along with eight megabytes of level three cache, PCIe 3.0 connectivity, and updates to other areas like the video engine. While AMD's presentation doesn't go into any of the specifics around Renoir, given it's the same die as what we talked about in the Ryzen Mobile 4000 launch, if you're interested in the details, it's worth going back and checking the info from that launch. The actual lineup consists of six processors split into two TDP categories. The G series is entirely 65 watt parts, with a simple cadence of CPU and GPU cores. At the bottom of the stack is the Ryzen 3 4300G, offering four cores, eight threads, and six Vega compute units. The base clock is listed at 3.8 GHz on the CPU, with a 4.0 GHz boost, and the GPU gets clocked at 1700 MHz. Then next up we have the Ryzen 5 4600G, offering six cores and 12 threads plus 7 Vega compute units, clock speeds are increased too. The boost clock jumps to 4.2 GHz and the GPU clock goes up to 1900 MHz, while the CPU base does drop slightly to 3.7 GHz to fit within the TDP. Then the highest end part is the Ryzen 7 4700G, which brings the full 8 Zen 2 cores, 16 threads, and a fully unlocked 8 Vega compute units that clock up to 2100 MHz. The boost clock here for the CPU is listed at 4.4 GHz. 
Then for the 35 watt GE lineup, we're seeing much the same in terms of configurations, especially on the GPU side. The main difference here being base clocks, which are between 300 and 500 megahertz lower depending on the part. The boost clock for the 4700 GE also drops to 4.3 gigahertz, as does the GPU clock, down to 2000 megahertz. In practice, in a TDP limited situation, say with a weak cooler, the GE processors will clock lower. Naturally, this is a huge specification upgrade over Ryzen 3000 APUs, which were based on the Zen Plus architecture. Not only do we get the bump up to Zen 2 CPU cores here, we also get double the cores for the high-end part, from 4 to 8. This allows AMD to comfortably bring a Ryzen 7 APU to the market, which they haven't done previously for the desktop line. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 5 line gets boosted from 4 to 6 cores, and the Ryzen 3 lineup gets SMT enabled with its 4 cores. All parts are set to gain in CPU performance from some combination of more cores, SMT, higher clock speeds, and Zen 2 enhancements. The GPU side is a little bit trickier to nail down, as the compute unit count has dropped between Zen Plus and Zen 2 APUs, going from 11 Vega compute units with Ryzen 3000, down to just 8 compute units here. However, clock speeds have drastically increased, now topping out at 2100 MHz, which is much higher than the 1400 MHz offered with the previous generation. So while we see 27% fewer compute units, clock speeds are 50% higher, and this should see Renoir come out with better GPU performance, especially when you factor in higher attainable memory speeds and a better CPU core. AMD does have some performance information for these processors, which you should of course take with a grain of salt given they are coming straight from the company at hand, but I guess it's worth showing some of these numbers. With the Ryzen 7 4700G and Ryzen 5 4600G, AMD are claiming pretty significant gains over the Ryzen 5 3400G, as you'd expect for CPU performance, given the enormous upgrade to the CPU core design. However, GPU gains are more modest. AMD is showing the 4600G with 7 compute units at up to 1900 MHz, slightly outperforming the 3400G with its 11 compute units at up to 1400 MHz in 3D Mark Time Spy, although this appears to be an overall score which would also factor in the CPU gains. Meanwhile, the 4700G with the maximum GPU configuration is 19% faster. Then we go through some of the comparisons to Intel processors, and yeah, AMD are claiming either a tie in results like Handbrake for the 4700G versus Core i7-9700, two significant gains in workloads like DaVinci Resolve, where AMD are leveraging their far superior integrated GPU. In fact, for all of these benchmarks, it appears as though the Intel parts are being tested without a discrete GPU. I guess this is somewhat fair, as it's a CPU plus iGPU versus CPU plus iGPU test, but you'd have to wonder how many people would actually either build a Core i7-9700 desktop or offer a pre-built without even a low-end discrete GPU. AMD also provided slides for the Ryzen 3 4300G, which doesn't show as significant gains given we're still looking at base quad-core designs, but still a 60% gain in Cinebench multi-threading is impressive given the gains are coming from SMT, higher clocks, and the Zen 2 architecture alone, rather than having more physical cores. As for other benchmarks, well, we have a reasonable idea of how Renoir will perform up against desktop Ryzen processors based on our testing of Ryzen Mobile 4000 APUs. As it stands right now, a 45 watt processor like the Ryzen 7 4800H is already able to outperform a Ryzen 5 3600 in most workloads, so this bodes well for the Ryzen 7 4700G and 4700GE, which is a similar design to the 4800H. Of course, We'd expect an 8-core desktop APU to outperform AMD's 6-core Ryzen CPU, but given we are already seeing that on the mobile side, those margins should grow on the desktop at 65 watts. Meanwhile, the 4800H isn't quite getting up to the level of a 3700X, but it is clocked lower, usually hitting the mid to low 3 GHz range all-core. With the 3700X being more like a 4 GHz all-core CPU, it typically ends up 15-20% to faster. That margin should be much narrower between the 4700G and 3700X for CPU limited workloads. The 4700G has a 3.6 GHz base clock compared to 2.9 GHz for the 4800H, and a higher boost as well at 4.4 versus 4.2 GHz.
In fact, given the rated specifications for the Ryzen 3000 CPU and Ryzen 4000 APU lines on the CPU side, we should see very similar performance. The 3700X and 4700G have the same 3.6GHz base and 4.4GHz boost clock. The 4600G sits between the 3600 and 3600X with its 3.7GHz base and 4.2GHz boost. The only significant factor should be aspects like cache, Renoir has just 8 megabytes of level 3 compared to 32 megabytes for the desktop CPUs of this core count, as well as things like latencies. All that stuff will require in-depth benchmarking and it will be over to Steve to deliver that. I think he's looking at sourcing some OEM systems to take an early look at these G-series parts. AMD also announced today the Ryzen Pro 4000 G series, which is the usual pro spin on their mainstream desktop line with added security and management features. The naming here is a little different to simply slapping pro into the name. Last year we had the Ryzen 5 3400G and Ryzen 5 Pro 3400G. This year we're getting the Ryzen 5 4600G and Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G as an example. However, despite the added 50 in the Pro name, both parts have identical specs, and this is also true for the other Pro SKUs, so everything we've just been talking about for performance holds true here. In addition for the Pro market, AMD were keen to emphasize the power advantage they have for their APUs. Power draw is an important metric for the business and enterprise space. AMD is showing that the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G is able to deliver 40% more performance per watt than the Intel competition, which in this case means just more performance with a small reduction to power draw. And just finally, AMD are also pushing out some new Athlon 3000 G series parts, including the Gold 3150G, Gold 3150GE, and Silver 3050GE, which all have Pro counterparts. These are your standard low-end SKUs with four cores and four threads. The Athlon Silver 3050GE is basically an Athlon 300GE from before, while the 3150G is very similar to the Ryzen 3 3200G. These are Zen Plus parts, so AMD isn't quite ready to push Zen 2 down to the low end yet. That's essentially it for today's Ryzen 4000 APU announcement. Again, what we went through today is what is coming to pre-built systems and not necessarily DIY desktop. Although, if I was a betting man, I'd be placing bets that what we're seeing here is going to be very close to what AMD will bring to the DIY desktop in the next few months. Maybe not identical, but there are only so many Renoir variations that are possible. So, if anything, we might see slight variations to clock speeds or GPU configurations, but Generally, I would think that if Renoir does come to the desktop, like we expect that it will be pretty similar. It would also have been nice if the timelines could have aligned better so that the OEM and DIY stuff could be launched at the same time, but I guess it is what it is. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you enjoy our news wrap-ups and coverage of things like this, you can always subscribe to get all that stuff directly in your inbox. We also have our Patreon page if you're interested in joining our you know, monthly live streams, our Discord chat, all that sort of thing. You can check that out. Links in the description below, and I'll catch you in the next one.